Hi guys. Okay, so before us we have a our paint colors. We've got our orange, yellow, white, tan. I put the black on a separate plate. And then I've got the brown as well. And for this one I'll be doing a green background. I added a bonus color for background color. So as here's one with the blue that I added into your guys' palette. Or I think I gave, uh, I tried to sneak in a pink and a green and a blue into everybody's kits for fun background options if you don't want to do just the polka dot, but you are welcome to do the polka dot in any color. Here's that polka dot option that you can do. So, <clears throat> we'll also need paintbrush, a paper towel or rag. I'm gonna be using a rag because we're trying to conserve our paper towels and a cup of water. And then I usually use a mechanical pencil. Uh, some people like art pencils, you have the option, just any pencil you use from school. I feel like um, mechanical pencils smudge the less, least amount for me and um, usually erase the best and cover up. So I always go with mechanical pencil, grab one, and we're just gonna do a light outline. So you can see right here, we've got a diagonal line that we're gonna draw. So first we're gonna find the dimensions of our board. Try and find the middle of your canvas, halfway, and then find half of the halfway mark. So one fourth of your canvas, then go the other way, halfway, half of the half on your right, Okay, the, and find the quadrants. Hmm, find about a third. How would you split this up into three parts? Okay, then go up your, the halfway on the width of your board. Find the halfway mark. Find the middle of your board. Just to get to know it. We need to get to know this really well. So, at the one quarter mark of our canvas, we are going to make a one inch diagonal line going in towards the middle of our canvas. Then we are going to go and make it about half inch to three quarter inch diagonal going the other way. And then the other way, we're making like a little Pac-Man mouth right there. You can see, it's kind of his fur jutting out right around his face that we're making right there. So these are both about half inch to three quarter inch lines. And then coming from that, we're gonna go straight up to about halfway up our canvas. Straight, straight, straight line, just a nice light line. Then we're going to make a, pretend like the car is making a wide C turn, turning left and start curving into our ear. So we got that C turn we made, about one inch. And then we're gonna make a C turn. He's gonna turn the other way in the car, back up. Then he's gonna drive straight down the road Then at the top of the ear, we got one more turn. It's gonna be right by the top of the canvas. But then he's gonna go straight down the hill. This is gonna be a nice angle. And this doesn't have to be perfect, so just try and be confident with, make nice lines. And then at the end, we'll look at the composition and come back and be like, hmm, I want the ear to move here and here. It's really easy. We'll paint over all the pencil lines at the end. Don't have to worry about them being perfect. Okay, then to make sure that the, everything meets in the middle, we're gonna go to the other side now and meet our halfway mark, half of the halfway, and we're gonna draw 
one inch straight line just coming a little bit curved in. Then we're going to make a little fur bump, just a little one this time. It's about a half inch in size of a bump. Then we're just going to make kind of a little bit of bumps all the way up to the halfway mark. Nice little furry side. Then we're going to start that C turn into our ear. Just make a really nice curved ear on this side. And then the car turns at the very top again. And then once you get to the top, the car goes all the way down the hill. Just a nice little cruise. You can kind of take, take a look. They don't have to be perfectly matched, as you can see, like the ears. People and animals and things aren't actually symmetrical and it makes them look more realistic if they're not perfectly <laughs> symmetrical. That's the real life and that's the beauty of a portrait so then but we're just making sure that they're not you know completely lopsided they've just got to be similar the way we compare ears and eyes is that they are sisters but they don't have to be twins and then there should be about a four inch line at the top of the head connecting the ears Okay, then we're gonna go into the middle. We're gonna go about, go to the bottom of the left ear and go down about one inch from the bottom of the left ear. Then you're gonna go inside the dog's face about two inches. So you got one inch, then you go about two inch. And if you're confused what an inch is, look at the long, part of your thumb, that's going to be about an inch. What? So you can make two of the long parts of your thumb in from the outside of his face. So then we're going to go to the other side and you just make a little tick mark right there. And then come from the other side about an inch down. You can use your thumb from the bottom of his ear. Then about two inches in, I'm gonna make a tick mark. Then you wanna make sure that those are even. You can use your pencil to make sure that they're about even. And then you want the eye, this is gonna be where the start of the outside of the eye is. So it's gonna be about one inch wide, so we're just gonna go in and draw the other tick mark. About one inch in from that so this is how wide your eye will be so now to connect our ticks our little dashes we're going to make half of an oval so a circle is really nice and round but an oval is a little bit more elongated so you think of kind of a crescent moon as you're connecting these not too curved just a nice rounded line And again, you can, we'll adjust them as we paint over them and make them exactly what you want. Then to make the top of the eye, this one we're gonna make this almost three quarters of a circle. It's gonna be really nice and round for the top of the eye. Almost like you're drawing an igloo on the top. Really nice round igloo. This one was not wide enough. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider Make that igloo on the top. Got two eyes. Then we're gonna come down. We're gonna find the middle between our two eyes. About even with our tick marks. And then we're gonna go down one inch, two inch. And 
and that's going to be uh, it's more about an inch of a an inch and a half where we're going to draw our dog's nose and the inside of the eye if you go down from the inside of the eye that's kind of where the edge of your dog's nose is going to be you want to come down from that and then I come in about a quarter of an inch from that and that will be where you want to actually draw your line full line and this one we're making a square but with rounded edges And then right in the mid, halfway up the line, we're going to make two ovals coming in from the inside. And that will be your dog's nostrils. And then we're gonna draw below your dog's nose, there's gonna be a little pyramid, upside down pyramid, and then a small, small line splitting off into his big smile. So this is going to be curved and then about an inch past the nose. We're going to curve it and then it's just going to go straight up into his smile, diagonal smile. Then down below, we're gonna come from the bottom of that and make another, this one where it's gonna be an upside down igloo. Make inside his mouth. That leads down into his tongue. And we're gonna mark right here at the bottom of his ear about where his, we're gonna be able to look inside of his ear. Everybody, you know, you can, you can look and see inside their brain into their eardrum, ear canal. <clears throat> we're just drawing where his ear canals are kind of going to be and we'll make that into something pretty. Okay, so now we get to pull out our paintbrush. I call my paintbrush the captain because it's a Marvel reference. And so I think of it as either Captain Marvel or Captain America, and they do all the strategy or heavy lifting. And for this painting, we don't even need a big paintbrush or a detail brush. The captain can get it all done. That's what's so amazing about it. So <clears throat> we're gonna take our paintbrush like a pencil. So instead of doing like a broad stroke, we're gonna use it like a pencil and use the tip of it and just go and outline our pencil marks. After you've decided that, oh yeah, I like that shape of my corgi, you've got it just how you like it. You're gonna use the tip of your paintbrush to make, outline it in black. And we don't want a feathered edge here. I like to make Black, um, the good use of black and white can make your image really sharp and just really finish the look of your painting. So a feathered edge means that it's like, you can see kind of some of these feathered edges, but I'm gonna get rid of all of them. So to show you what a feathered edge is, and we'll do that on purpose in a lot of parts, because a feathered edge looks more like fur, it's blended, but a sharp edge is a solid line. And so I'm gonna just go through and make sure that this is a really nice solid line. So you need to have enough paint on your brush to get a nice solid line. My kids are playing outside, they're super cute. 
I think that it's fine to have their organic voices in the background, so if you don't mind, they're just going to be playing. They are being supervised by my husband while I paint with you guys, so my son is really funny. He's wild. So we're just going through and... Racing our lines that we made with our black paint. Then we're going to come in on the eyes as well and outline our igloo top. And bottom. Move down to the nose, make that pyramid at the bottom of the nose, get the circles filled in. If it's not perfect with the black, don't worry, we'll, we're going to paint over it. Like try and be as careful as you can because it is hard to cover up black, but also don't stress if the line isn't exactly what you want it to be. We can come back in at the end and make sh and touch up and make sure that it's something that you're really happy with the result. And just, I kind of usually glance over my painting as a whole as I'm going and being like, hmm, how do I like this? Where do I need to go back and touch up? So that's why I kind of jump around between things. Like when I see something, oh, I want to fix that, I go and fix it right away. Otherwise, I forget about it later. Until the very end, we're going to come back and fix again. But... As we go, you can decide to, while we have the black paint out, you might as well make it something that you are semi-happy with and will like the composition. At the top of the nose, I'm gonna make a second layer, so it's about a half inch thick at the top and then I'm gonna feather that's where you push the top of the brush you do pressure and then release the pressure almost flicking the brush up so you get kind of this really furry blended edge really fun then I'm going to make a pyramid coming up into the nose so we've got our pyramid going down into the mouth then a pyramid up into the nose Kind of dotting into the middle. And then I'm going to make a little bit thicker Lois mouth. Then we're going to go up into the eyes. We are going to make a circle at the top of the eyes. So it's, it doesn't even go, it's about three quarters of the way down in your igloo.
that the bottom of this circle is going to be. It doesn't even go all the way to the bottom. And that's my daughter squealing in the background. You can see. Or here, not to see. You can see he's gonna have brown eyes. But we're making the black center right now. Then go to the other side and make a nice circle. And I usually come to the center of the eyes and I like to make sure that it's almost rounded where the two lines meet. Just lightly dabbing my paintbrush to make sure that it kind of has a little bit of texture, a little bit of movement right there. Now on this side, I'm just going to come in, add a little bit more black. Okay, then the ears, get to, we get to make some really fun texture here and use our feathering technique where you use flick the brush upward. So we're going to start with pressure and then flick. make this really fun ear canal you can look into his brain see his thoughts yeah. then we're going to add a couple more lines this one just kind of about a half inch in from your original line. Make a flick and then up at the top. Kind of follow the top curvature of the ear. And then I want this to be a solid line down here so I'm going to come back and make sure that it's all even. Same thing on the other ear. And go back through and make sure that they are the lines that you want them to be. Perfecto. Okay, then give your paintbrush a bath. You're gonna switch colors from black, dry them off on your paper towel. Then we're going to make our delicious corgi color. So the orange is really bossy. So you're only going to need a little bit. That's why I didn't put it in every palette is because um, I tried to give as little orange as possible because we're gonna use mostly yellow and the tan here with a little bit of orange because the orange will take over if it can. It will take over the town. So we wanna keep color town, just a little bit of orange. So as you're mixing color, never pull from the middle. Don't use the whole thing. We're just pulling from the edge of each color so that we can use that color later and make more different colors. So if you feel like they're too close together, you can pull some over across your paint. 
you want to kind of scoop some over so that you can really get the color that you want. Then we're going to take that color and we're going to make like a one inch outline on the outside of our black outline. And so about one inch in. on both sides. Then on the top of the head, grab my reference to show you, there's going to be a white line down the middle, so we're not going to make the orange meet. And if you did already, don't worry about it because we can paint white over it. But we're just going to do a nice little layer all around, right down around his eyes as well. And you can name your corgi. We just got a corgi this year. His name is Toby. But last night I was watching 101 Dalmatians and I thought, Pongo, that is an awesome name. Why don't we name our dog Pongo? Just kidding. We, he's Toby. He's meant to be Toby. But I want to name my corgi Pongo today. And you can pick a name for your corgi. Decide what you... what your vibes are gonna be with your corgi today. So for Pongo, I'm going to kind of make a one inch mark that I'm gonna stay away from, right coming down the middle of his face. And then just make kind of, fill it in. And it's okay if you touch your black outlines a little bit as you're getting close to them. We'll probably purposely do it at the end to feather onto the black just a little bit. Give a really fun texture. So we're filling in his forehead almost completely between other than where that line is. And then below the eye, it's going to be about a half inch. You're just making, giving him a little bit of eyeliner right now. You can see where this makes a triangle. We're going to curve that off really nicely. Then we're coming from the other side. We're just going to make like a curved line from the middle line that we made all the way over to our one inch outline on the other side. And you can see if you have paint on your canvas, just try and move that paint around, make sure that it's even. Or grab more of your beautiful, beautiful Corgi for creation. So take more tan, yellow, orange. Just pulling as much as you want from each one. Mine is usually, the tan can boss around the yellow too, so you want to be careful of that. But you usually just get this really nice of yellowy tan Ooh. 
I'm going to use Keith Tilling. These strokes you can use the broad strokes and if you need to erase a little bit I just use my finger or you can use your paper towel or rag and just take the very corner of it